any piece of content that you create that has a URL that you can figure out, you can send people to any of it. And so it's beautiful because it's literally like you are creating content and connecting the dots and Pinterest loves it because you're adding content to their platform that is relevant and that can serve people. I'm Amy Porterfield, ex-corporate girl turned CEO of a multi seven-figure business. But it wasn't all that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the budget, and the time to focus on growing my small but mighty business. Fast forward past many failed attempts and lessons learned, and you'll see the business I have today, one that changes lives and gives me more freedom than I ever thought possible. One that used to only exist as a daydream. I created the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step strategies to help you do the same. If you're an ambitious entrepreneur or one in the making who's looking to create a business that makes an impact and a life you love, you're in the right place, friend. Let's get started. Well, hey there, friend. Welcome to another episode of Online Marketing Made Easy. You have definitely joined me for a juicy episode. Whether you clicked on this because of the title or you listen to every episode that I do rain or shine, by the way, thank you for that. Or maybe you just landed here and you're not even sure how you are in for a real treat. Trust me. Today, my friend, a multi-million dollar business owner, New York Times bestselling author, Pinterest expert and all around amazing human being, Jenna Kutcher, is spilling the tea on how to use Pinterest to build a successful business and grow a thriving email list. Now, if you want to spend less time on social media to grow your business, grow your email list and make more money, you cannot pass up this episode. You're going to fall over when she tells you how many hours a week you need to devote to this. Just get ready. When it comes to Pinterest, Jenna is definitely my go-to, and so I can't wait for you to hear our conversation today. We're going to dive into how to get started or how to revive an old Pinterest page, how to strategically use it to grow your email list, how to use it to drive more traffic to your website, and we're going to talk about are there any trends that you need to pay attention to when it comes to Pinterest. You're going to love this episode. I'm just going to give it away. There's one thing she said, because I already interviewed her. I always do my intros and my outros afterwards, so I kind of know where the conversation went. She said that Pinterest is not a social media site. And that made perfect sense once she explained it, but it also allowed me to take a big sigh of relief because I think we all as business owners get a little burned out with having to post on social so much. Pinterest is not a social media site. And what is it? Well, you have to wait to listen. And once you tune in, you'll also realize it's easier than you think. I won't make you wait any longer. Let's welcome my dear friend, Jenna Kutcher. Well, hey there, Jenna. Welcome back to the show. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for having me back again. I mean, we have talked about so many different topics on the show, but did you know we haven't talked about Pinterest since 2017? What? That is crazy. First off, what a reminder that I've been talking about this for so many years. <laughs> but the fact that we have not touched on this in recent years is absolutely shocking. I agree. And I'm so glad that we're getting back to this topic because it is one of the common questions I get asked where my students really struggle with social media. They don't necessarily yep. want to be dancing on reels on Instagram or TikTok, and they can't quite find what content is working working for them. So they want to go to Pinterest because they feel as though it feels different and it is different. And my conversations mm-hmm. with you, it absolutely is a different platform than what we most likely are using. So we're going to yes. get into that today, right? Yes. Oh, we're going to talk about all of that. Where do you want to begin? I want to talk about your company first. Like how has Pinterest made a difference inside of your own business? Okay. So the craziest thing about Pinterest for my company is that I started using it back when I was a wedding photographer. So most people know me today for what I do with online courses and the podcast and the book and all of these different things. But when I started on Pinterest, it was thanks to my incredible VA, Caitlin, who made a case for it. 
literally the first time I met her, she asked me, Jenna, how are you using Pinterest? This is even before I hired her. And I was like, well, I am pinning recipes. I'm finding great outfits and my dream home looks incredible. Thank you very much. (laughs) And she was like, no, how are you using it in your business? And I was like, well, I don't, I actually don't think it would work. Like I am serving a very general location of like Wisconsin brides and grooms, planning weddings in the next year. Like, I don't even see how this could work. And so she said, give me your login and your password and let me just try it out. And I am so thankful she did that because I had a lot of doubt. Like I was kind of like, all right, good luck. Like, we'll see what happens. And we started to get traction. And I am so grateful that I started using it way back then because now it has shifted everything in the way that we use it for my business today. But this should be a reminder for any listener listening, regardless of if you have a service-based business, a product-based business, a digital business, this can work for you. And it's worked for every iteration of my business. And so nowadays, Pinterest is the number one way that we organically drive traffic to my website. And so if anyone is listening, to this podcast and they need more eyeballs on their offers in order to make more sales, which let's be honest, that's everybody. Pinterest is something that you have to use in your business this year. Okay. So I don't know if I'm jumping the gun, but I really want to find out number one, how are you getting Pinterest followers? And two, how are you converting these Pinterest followers into subscribers on your email list, which I'm assuming is what you're doing, or are you just directly selling right from the pins? Okay. So this is awesome. Okay. So there's a few different things we have to differentiate before we go into this. So first things first, Pinterest isn't social media. So I think a lot of times our brain mentally lumps it into this social media category because when we go on somebody's website, we see like, you know, we see Facebook and Instagram and pins. So we think Pinterest is social media. It is not social media. It's a search engine. And when you start to think of it that way, it totally shifts the way that you approach it and the way that you use it. So Pinterest is basically like a beautiful version of Google that is more centered on images, graphics, and like beautiful things. So it's a way more visual version of Google. But generally speaking, it is a search engine, which is great news for so many of us. One, The number of your followers, it can impact how you reach people, but it is not the number one way that you reach people. The number one way that you reach people is not through having this massive following. It's not another platform where you're like, great, now I have to go start at zero again, get up to a certain threshold. It doesn't work that way. It's all about being found via searchability or SEO, search engine optimization, because it's a search engine. So the way that we leverage Pinterest the most, however, there are a few different ways that you can do this, is that we are focused on getting traffic to places that we own on the internet, which is our website and our blog. If somebody is listening to this and they're like, hold up, I don't have a website or I don't have a blog yet, you can still use Pinterest. So the big thing that you want to think about is that since it's a search engine, its goal is to connect people to the relevant content that they're searching for. When people go onto Pinterest, they're literally typing like, how do I organize my closet? How do I start an email list? How do I create an online course? They're typing in questions like that. And you want your content to answer those questions. Pinterest is like this masterful connector. And so unlike other social media places, they actually want to send people off of their platform to find the info that they're searching for. And so all you have to think about is having your content be found when someone's searching And then what is the plan for when that person lands to where you're sending them? And the cool thing is, is that you can send them anywhere. So you could send them to a landing page. You could send them to your website. You could send them to your blog. You could send them to your podcast, your YouTube channel, or your Instagram. You can send people anywhere. You get to designate where they land. And so the thought process really just is, okay, so what happens once they get there? Okay. I... I'm sure you've said this to me before because we talk all the time about (laughs) all things marketing. Everything. (laughs) But I didn't know that you didn't look at Pinterest as it's not a social media site. And you don't even know my audience right now. They just took like the biggest sigh of relief because social media can be overwhelming to many of us. And 
The fact that I don't have to look at it as social media makes me so happy. It adds kind of just a layer of, oh, I'm interested. I want to try this out. Like, tell me more. So if you all are listening and you just felt a relief from that, so did I. I kind of, it it makes me want to use it even more. So I love that you said that. And I also, I was going to ask you, can you use Pinterest to drive more downloads on your podcast? Many Mm -hmm. of my listeners have a podcast or they want to have one. And you're saying, yeah, you could send them wherever you want. Yes. Yes. So you can literally like we use Pinterest to even grow my Instagram. So like if there are people listening and they're like, I'm hitting dead ends everywhere. Any piece of content that you create that has a URL that you can figure out, right? You can send people to any of it. And so it's beautiful because it's literally like you are creating content and connecting the dots and Pinterest loves it because you're adding content to their platform that is relevant and that can serve people. So you can send them to your YouTube channel. You can send people to your podcast, to a landing page, to your email list, like directly anywhere that you can generate a URL to, you can send people there. That's fantastic. Now, my next question might be the wrong question because I was going to ask you, how do you start getting Pinterest followers? But are you telling me that I shouldn't be focused on the followers? No. Okay. So the big thing that I think happens is because of our conditioning with other social media platforms, that's where our brain goes. That's a natural thought, right? You think I need to have this big audience. But again, if we go back to the heartbeat that Pinterest is a search engine, it's not necessarily about the followers. Now, more followers will help your stuff because there is an algorithm on it, just like the other platforms, but it's not as aggressive as the other platforms. And it actually works in your favor on Pinterest. And so it's kind of this interesting thing because it's not necessarily another popularity contest. Think about it. How many times, and you and I were literally just talking about using Pinterest for designing different spaces in our homes. Yes. And so How many times do you find a beautiful pin? It's kind of rare that you actually click through to find the creator of the pin and follow them, right? That's not necessarily the user step. You find the content, you save that content, and you visit that content. And so that's why it's not necessarily as pertinent to focus on followers. What I want you to focus on is monthly views. So how many people are viewing your pins on a monthly basis? And then the step beyond that would be, how many of those views are converting into clicks? So how many people are not just viewing your pin and saving it, but how many people are actually taking that next step to click on your pin and let it guide you to wherever you have designated as a person who created it? Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense, which leads me to the question, can you kind of break down the anatomy of a perfect pin? Because as you're talking, I'm like, okay, so if I don't have to worry about it getting a bunch of followers, which yet again makes me very happy, what is the anatomy of a perfect pin to get somebody to do something? And let's talk, because you and I both teach list building, let's talk about the fact that our listeners want to grow their email list. And let's pretend that you are a coach for women and confidence. It's like a big topic in my audience for some reason. Women teaching other women how to find confidence and be their authentic self. We're just going to go there, okay? Because it's a popular topic. What are they pinning to get people to pay attention, to go somewhere, to sign up for an email list? Okay. So I'm going to give so much good news on this podcast. I feel like I'm just like sprinkling it out. (laughs) Okay. So the one thing that is necessary on Pinterest, and this is actually pretty amazing for all of us, is that in order to stay relevant, quote unquote, on the platform, all you have to do is contribute one pin per day. Okay. Okay. One pin per day. That is good Now, this can be scheduled out. So My entire Pinterest strategy takes under an hour per week and we drive millions of monthly views and we get thousands upon thousands of people landing on our website because of it. Under one hour a week. Now, the average marketer is spending 20 hours a week on marketing due to recent research. If you could take just one hour and get your number one traffic driver to the place that you built on the web, like your home on the web, oh my gosh. Okay. So let's go to your example. So one beautiful thing about Pinterest that is going to, again, just like make this the cherry on top is that it is a wonderful low risk way to split test different things. Mm -hmm. So for so many of your listeners, if they have a certain freebie, let's say they're creating a freebie of 10 ways to love yourself more. They could use Pinterest to split test a million different things. They could split test different titles. 
They could split test different covers. They could split test different colors. They could split test different images. They could split test different descriptors or like searchable terms. And so what's beautiful is that you are contributing these graphics. So literally all you would do, Amy, is you could upload the cover of your freebie, type in a short description and put the link of the landing page. That's it. That's all you're doing on Pinterest. That's one pin that you're creating. But what's amazing is for people that are running things like paid ads or thinking about like, how can I make sure that this is optimized? Pinterest is the lowest risk way you can test it because you could upload 10 different graphics that all look totally different to Pinterest point them all to the same place and you could see which one is winning, which one is performing the best before you take things onto other platforms like paid ad strategies. You can save yourself money. And so what's amazing is when you go onto Pinterest, let's say I am someone searching for that content and I'm typing in, how do you build self-confidence? Somebody's freebie is going to pop up literally after your listeners listen to this show, go on to Pinterest and type in that topic. And you are going to find a plethora of posts and pins that point to something just like we're talking about. Now, when we're thinking of like the anatomy of a perfect pin, you want to make sure that you have a call to action on that graphic. So what can happen is that a lot of times users on Pinterest are just collecting, right? A lot of us go there to collect ideas, products, things that we want. But if they know that there's another step waiting for them, more information that they're searching for, you can have just like you would have on a Facebook ad, a little button that says like free download or click for more or, you know, get my guide or whatever that is. And so what I love about Pinterest is that it allows us to test out a ton of different graphics. They can literally all point to the same URL and they're counted as fresh pins. Now we can talk about the lifespan of a pin because I think that's the fascinating part about this that other platforms can't compete with. But what's beautiful is, is if you think about it, most of your audience is on this content creation hamster wheel, right? They're just constantly creating content. Your audience is sitting on a gold mine of content from either past Instagram posts, emails they sent to their list, freebies, blogs, podcast episodes, YouTube, like all of that is content that can be uploaded and shared onto Pinterest. And so if you just uploaded one pin per day, you could massively change the amount of eyeballs getting onto your offers and then get those eyeballs converted onto your email list where you can serve them and then eventually sell to them. Okay. So I know what my audience is thinking. One of the questions they're thinking right now is, how am I creating this pin? I don't know yeah. graphic design. I'm not really, I, if it was me, I, you know me, I'm not very good at making things look good like you are. Well, where am I going to even create the pin? Um, Canva. Canva That's what I everything. You were say. Yes. Okay. So Canva has amazing pin templates. And here's what I want for you to think of. So Amy, think about this episode that we're recording right now. Yeah. It takes probably about three hours from start to finish of ideating, planning, scheduling, recording, editing, publishing. Like it's a lot of work, right? Yeah. And a lot of times we're creating content just like this episode and it lives and dies within about a day, right? We post right. about it once and then we're on to the next piece. Is it easier for you to record 10 podcast episodes or is it easier for you to create 10 graphics that promote the same episode? Amen. I'd rather write graphics. Yes. Yes. And so what's beautiful is we use just these templates that we've created on Canva and we can take one piece of content and figure out 10 different ways to promote it on Pinterest in under 10 minutes. And the rest of the hour that we spend per week, one hour per week or less, is just scheduling it out so that they drip out one to two pins per day all week, set it and forget it. It's not like other platforms where you constantly have to be on and engaged. You could literally log into Pinterest for one hour a week or have your VA do it and have them log out until they come back in on the next week. And so it's just such a different nature, which I think is the pace that most of us are craving of not having to be constantly connected, constantly on, constantly engaging. And I just think that's a huge win. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm thinking of my students who don't want to show their face on social. Maybe over yes. time they will, but they're just not into it right now. Or they can't because they're in a nine to five job. So they can't really yep. blow up Instagram yet. This is such a great alternative to growing that email list and getting traction. 
Yes. And it's amazing too, even if you're in the side hustle phase or you're still in that like dreaming phase, this is an amazing way to test out different ideas you have to see what people are actually willing to exchange something for, whether it's their email address or $5, right? And yes. so this is such a low risk way. And I think that for so many people, myself included, putting yourself out on Instagram saying, I'm doing this thing or I'm creating this thing, that's so vulnerable. Yes. And so this is like this kind of like incognito way of testing out these ideas, these offers, these freebies, like whatever it is, you just upload it. It's not blasted everywhere. It's not you having to like explain why you're doing something. It's a really like undercover way of getting yourself out there and seeing what resonates, what people are actually searching for and what works. That incognito is so true because I don't know if I've ever clicked on a pin that I really found valuable and thought, who created this? I'm going to go back and find out who this creator is. Some people yeah. might do that, but it's not really top of mind, which is kind of a great thing. It kind of gives you it's a like little freeing. Yes, it's freedom. You're so right. Now, yeah. I was thinking, you know how when we teach email lists, one of the questions we get asked a lot is, Amy, I haven't emailed my list in six months. How do I revive an old email list? Well, yeah. does that, how does that work with Pinterest? A lot of people listening, they've dabbled with Pinterest. They've done yeah. a few things and haven't touched it for six months, a year. Do they have to do something different to get it up and going again? No. So one of the things that I always try to teach on is a lot of people that are listening right now, if they're going to start on on Pinterest, they're looking at their current Pinterest and it's not a reflection of like their business or things, right? I actually have a burner Pinterest. I sent you the log, like the thing the other day. Cause I was like, this is my burner Pinterest where this is where I go to look at home and outfits and recipes and stuff. But one thing that's really interesting about Pinterest is that any text on the platform is searchable. And because Pinterest has an algorithm, it's not only looking at what type of content you're uploading, but also what are you searching for? And so a lot of people listening, they're going to be like, okay, well, I mean, like I don't sell fashion design. So like, that's not it. And so the only thing that I would say is that you want to set your profile up appropriately, knowing that every piece of text on there is searchable. So you want your bio. I even texted you the other day of like, have someone on your team go in and update your bio photo. Like I was just kind of looking at tweaks that you guys could make in your own strategy. And so all of your bio text, you want it to be very specific about who you are, what you do, and have a call to action in your bio, again, because it's searchable. And then what you can do is you don't have to delete everything. You can just make boards private that don't necessarily have to do with the type of content you're uploading, or you can start fresh. And there's really no bad way either way. Um, my team was like, Jenna, please start a burner account because you love this platform. And we don't want to be like mixing home decor and business. We want to make it really clear on like why you're on this platform from the business standpoint. But literally, if somebody like had been on it once and then they stopped using it strategically, all you have to do is just start getting back on the platform and uploading one pin a day and that's it. And it'll start walk working for you again. I created a burner Instagram with Hobie's email account. When you told me that, when I started to redesign our home, I thought, oh, I don't want everything to be about home design in here. Yes. So I love that tip. Now, okay, so if someone's listening, I am curious about how much of a caption, how much is the caption important? Uh, you've got this graphic, let's say yeah. 10 ways to love yourself, click here for a cheat sheet or a checklist or whatever. But how about that caption? Is it important? Yes. So okay. again, any text on Pinterest is searchable. So it's going to be looking at the text in your graphic via the algorithm, but really as you type in the pin description, that's where you really want to use keywords. Now okay. there are, it's very similar to anything you would do for your blog, for your website, even an Instagram caption where you're getting it to the point and you're really kind of driving home. This is what this is. And so all text is searchable and you want to just really think through, okay, what is the description? So let's say for that free guide, 10 ways to love yourself more, you could type in, you know, looking for self-confidence, this free guide will walk you through 10 easy ways to fall in love with yourself, appreciate your body, and come back home to yourself or something like that. So a description that would hit on other ways people might be searching. 
One of the tools that I love to use on Pinterest is the guided search feature. So you start typing in how to, and you could type in love or self and see what populates because the questions that are going to populate are the things that are the most searched for, very similar to Google. And so that's going to guide you in other keywords that you might want to consider that are kind of those fringe keywords that maybe you wouldn't have used, but other people might be using to search for the content that you're doing. Now with things like chat GPT, it's really easy to get amazing optimized pin descriptions so that you could say, you know, I have a freebie about this. I need, you know, X amount of words to describe what this is. And it can really optimize that description for you as well in terms of searchability. You don't want to keyword stuff where you're literally just typing in, you know, self-confidence, self-love, self-worth. You want it to be a readable sentence so that the user is in mind. It's not just about getting it seen, but having them click. And then just like other social media platforms, you want to use a call to action, right? So click the photo to see more, or I've created a free guide that is waiting for you. And so again, it's guiding people not just to save your pin, which is still very valuable, but to actually click from the pin to land onto wherever you're designating them to go. So that got me thinking, you're saying you just need an hour a week. Did I hear you right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's break this down. Okay. Let's talk about that. So recent research says 20 hours a week are being spent on marketing, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. And you think I'm crazy because I'm the person that is literally like creating every single reel and like sitting there like editing every little video. It can easily take me one hour to create one reel. Amen. Now on Instagram, you have about three to five hours to get that post to like pop off yes. or else it's just going to die, right? It lives and dies. It's like 24 to 48 hours max on Instagram for your posts to actually stay relevant and drive any results. Now that doesn't mean we don't use Instagram. We do. We use it and love it. The average lifespan of one pin. So Amy, if you upload one pin today, its average lifespan is six months. That's crazy good. That's I never crazy. thought of it that way. And again, it took you a couple minutes to make one pin, right? We're talking about a Canva template that makes a graphic. You can make 10 pins in about 10 minutes using templates and each singular pin has a lifespan on average of six months. I still have pins from years ago that are driving traffic to my website and I haven't done anything to them. So when we think about ROI, and I am in such a crazy season of my life with two little kids, I literally was taking one to urgent care this morning and like texting Amy, like this is wild. And I'm still doing this company in this season of life, any amount of time that I'm spending on my business, I absolutely want it to be worth it. And I want to be able to tie it to a result that isn't necessarily something that is such a quick hit. You know, social media is such a beautiful hit of dopamine that so many of us rely on. But how many times do we create something and we're so disappointed that it didn't hit or it didn't land or worse, that we can't connect it to any tangible result? And so when I think about the lifespan, like we're talking about like 1,200 Xing the lifespan of a post that takes less time to create and that can actually get people to where you want them to go, not just engagement on a platform that isn't encouraging them to land somewhere. So I just think in terms of your return on investment with your investment being your time, it is absolutely a no brainer. And the other thing I want to point out here is I no longer do my Pinterest. There was a time when I managed my Pinterest and did all this. It is a very easy hour to offload if you have any sort of support in your business. So it doesn't have to be another thing. And for most VAs, let's say you're spending 20 to 25, $30 an hour, that's $30 a week to get something that can drive results for months, even years. Okay. That part, because a lot of times my students are asking, what can I give a virtual assistant to help me grow my business? Ding, ding, ding. This is absolutely something that you could give a virtual assistant. I'm curious, do you use a scheduling tool for this or do you manually upload every day? Yeah. So there are two different ways that we recommend doing this. So there's Tailwind, which is an app that connects to Pinterest. It's a Pinterest approved platform and you can schedule in Tailwind. 
You can also organically on the platform schedule. We've tested them both out over the years just to see if there's any difference between yeah. using a third party or doing it organically. And we honestly couldn't make a case in one way or the other. So you can literally go in and just schedule them out for the week inside of Pinterest without any extra apps or platforms. Or you can use a service like Tailwind. We like Tailwind in some ways because it does have more analytics in terms of like the best time to be posting and just different things that can help optimize, but it is not required at all. And Tailwind also has a lot of other features that you can use even for other platforms like Instagram. And so it's one of those like tools that's a nice to have, but it's not a need to have. Okay. That's good to know. And then one thing I think is cool is that I know we had you back on for 2017 when we talked about this, but it feels like a tried and true platform where it's not super trendy like TikTok. Every single day yes. there's something new that's working. So I was going to ask you, are there any trends, let's say moving into 2024 that are really working for Pinterest now, or is it just kind of always working the same as it was years ago? Yeah. So honestly, when I think of how long I've been on the platform, it stayed very tried and true. So it is that not something good. that you're chasing, right? Like it's not like you're currently having to watch a million webinars, to like figure out what's new. Um, last year I re-recorded my entire program that teaches our system. And this year we started going through it again. I'm like, okay, what's happening? What's new? What's different on it? Nothing. So it's good in the way that it is very consistent. Um, they used to value more things. Like they used to say, like, you need to upload a crap ton of pins. And recently it was like, actually, you just need one to two quality pins a day. And that was like a beautiful shift of like, it's not about quantity. It's about quality, which I think is so refreshing. Um, and so again, yeah, it's not something that takes a million hours to learn. You can learn the entire like platform and how to use it in a couple hours and I think that that is just such a breath of fresh air. Whereas on Instagram and Twitter, like every week I'm like, okay, what do I need to be doing this week? Okay, what's what's working next week? And it's like, you can't even plan in advance because you don't know what's gonna be working two weeks from now. It's true. And to learn the TikTok dances is a lot of work. And I don't, no I don't do that. <laughs> there's no dance. I have never learned a TikTok dance, I promise. But there's no uh, dancing required to make yep. Pinterest work. You don't even have to show your face on video. Although yeah. I guess that I do have a question about that. Yeah. Is Pinterest, and I should know this, Jenna, and I genuinely am not sure. Do you upload video, like B-roll video, stuff like that? Is that a pin? Yeah, so so okay. they recently added video a couple years ago and so. it was kind of questionable of like, is this the platform? And I think when any platform adds in a new feature, there's always that resistance of like, well, wait, this isn't what I used it for in the past. Video is talking like very short clips. You can actually upload your Instagram reels onto Pinterest and they'll Ooh. actually do quite well. And so it is a feature. It's not a necessity by any means. It's not something that you have to do to find success on it, but it is something that we are seeing that is working quite well. And so, yeah, it could be like a short, even just like panning your fingers on a keyboard if you don't want to show your face or things like that. And again, we create all of our pin graphics inside of Canva. So you could bring in any sort of video. You could overlay it with like the title of your freebie or your podcast episode or whatever that is. Um, and just make a beautiful pin. And then the other thing that we always do too, and this would be relevant for you, Amy, um, but also for your audience is when you're creating all of your Facebook ad graphics, all you have to do inside of Canva is just resize to orientate four pins and you can use all that content. So when you're creating graphics for your podcast to live on your show notes, that's a pin. You're already creating it. And so I think a lot of people don't recognize that they're sitting on a gold mine of already created content that literally just needs to be resized in order to be optimized for the platform. You're already writing an intro for the show. The intro could be the pin description. It's literally not adding much more work. It's just adding a different level of strategy to how you're going into the creation process in the first place. I have a brand new social media gal that's starting soon. As you know, yeah. uh, Stacy, who's been with me for many, many years, has built her own business and she's going off to do big things. So we're hiring a new one. I feel like this should just be an hour a day. I mean, an hour a week. This is what we yes. want. Now, like make it part of their job from the get go. Yes. And it will just become a habit because really just like everything else, it has to become a habit, right? You have to be intentional with this. Anybody can do an hour a week. That feels yes. so doable. 
Yeah. Okay. So people are listening right now and they're like, okay, I'm intrigued. I'm interested. You have piqued my interest, but I'm not really sure like what to do next. You actually have a masterclass totally free that you're going to yep. give lots of examples, case studies, show how you use it, show the pins, show the captions, like really bring it to life. Yeah. I recommend everybody listening right now, just get on the free masterclass to see this really come to life. It's amyporterfield.com forward slash pin. That's easy. amyporterfield.com forward slash pin. That's where you want to go. But uh, Jenna, tell them what they can learn in this free masterclass. Yes. Okay. So please come to this masterclass if any of this resonated today, because you're going to see the visual walkthrough of how to do what I just talked about. So we are teaching how to 20X your traffic in under an hour a week without paid ads. And what I want to help show you is how easy it is to create pins. So I will literally walk you through how we take one piece of content. Again, it can be any type of content that you're creating, create 10 pins for it, and how we optimize those and use those to do the things we've talked about in this episode, like split test, see what's working, see what people are clicking on, and drive that traffic. And then I will teach you how to know what to do with that traffic to make the traffic valuable. Traffic alone is awesome, right? It's getting your stuff in front of people. But I want to show you how to think through the journey for somebody. Once they land where you're sending them, what happens and how do you make that super valuable so that these pins that are living on long beyond your Instagram post or your Facebook post are doing work for you while you rest. And so the training is awesome. We've led so many people through it. We've turned people into Pinterest believers. And if you're using the platform for pleasure, let me show you how to use it strategically. It's going to be the best 20 extra traffic in under an hour a week without paying for ads. Come join me for this webinar. And I just want all of you to know, if you're looking to grow your email list, you want to get on this masterclass. If yes. you're looking to sell more digital courses, you want to get on this masterclass. If you do live launching, evergreen launching, you want to get on this masterclass. And Jenna and I have very similar styles in terms of teaching and the content we share. So if you like yeah. anything of mine, you're absolutely going to devour everything that Jenna's going to share. So amyporterfield.com forward slash pin, get on this free masterclass. You do not want to miss it. And I cannot wait to hear about all of your pin magic that's going to happen. Jenna, I love you to the moon and back. Thanks for being my friend in everything that we do. And also thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me back. I'm sure I'll see you guys soon. See you soon. You know, it's kind of funny because I personally use Pinterest to search for a lot of things. Hobie and I bought 70 acres of land in a place kind of near Franklin, Tennessee. It's called Leaper's Fork. And one day we want to build a dream home there. So even though we're not doing it tomorrow, we got to save up some money and we want some time to figure this out. I'm already creating my dream home Pinterest board. So I use Pinterest for things like that, for fashion and hair care and all these different things. However, when I'm on there, I do see opportunity for so many topics related to how to grow a business, how to build an email list, how to sell digital courses. And those aren't my pins. I'm not pinning regularly. And I have to admit something. Back in 2017, when Jenna and I talked about this, I had every intention of getting on it and I didn't. And I don't know if you've been like this for other things in your business before. You're like all excited. Yes, I want to do that. And then you get distracted. Well, I'm not going to let that happen this time because when Jenna and I got off of our interview, we talked a little bit longer afterwards and I realized it's just a habit. One hour a week, that is a habit and I don't even need to do it. I have a team that can help me, but if I had no team, I would still absolutely see the value of devoting one hour a week. And because ad prices have gotten so expensive because it's so very noisy on Instagram and TikTok and all the other social media channels, this feels different and refreshing. So as my new social media gal comes on board, we're just going to make it an hour a week. That's what we do. It's part of our routine. It's a habit. And I think it could be really easy, especially with Canva. So I'm going to take this seriously. I'm going to update my bio right now. I'm going to update my picture. It's very, very old. So if you're on Pinterest, you might just see some of my pins coming down the pipeline. I love this episode. I loved how easy it feels, how doable it feels, and how 
economical it is to grow your email list and to grow your business, do not sleep on this masterclass. Jenna is an expert at teaching in a way that makes perfect sense and feels very doable, like you can implement right away. And it's free. amyporterfield.com forward slash pin. That's where you go to sign up for the free masterclass. Show up live. You'll get a lot more value out of it when you show up live. It's an hour of your week. That could be your hour of Pinterest this coming week. All right, my friends, I cannot wait for you to dive in and make sure you let me know how your pins are going and I'll keep you updated online as well. amyporterfield.com forward slash pin. I'll see you there.